Welcome to the BBTV Network, coming to you from the UK studios of BizVision. I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. Now, this is episode two in the Mindfulness and Mysticism trilogy with expert and author, Aura Nadrich. Hello again, Aura. Hello, Malcolm. Ah, we're coming from it like you're in Los Angeles, I'm in England, but it really doesn't matter because the words within your book are equally applicable to wherever you are in the world. Now, I don't want to talk theory all the time, especially when I've got such an expert guest like you. Can you kindly give, give us some actions or tips to rein in our busy minds in this fast spinning world so we can live, as you say, more consciously? You know, Malcolm, a great way to really start to implement a mindfulness into one's day, let's start with the day, is to do it upon awakening. Do you know, most people get, they wake up and what do they want to do? They want to jump out of bed. They want to immediately get on the fast train of life. Do you know? So a wonderful way to set the tone for the day is to take just a minute or two. And a lot of the mindfulness practices that I encourage people to start with only take a few minutes. So if you start the day with an awareness, that's the operative word with a mindfulness practice. How aware am I in this moment? I just woke up. Let me connect to gratitude that I'm one more day alive. Do you know? And that mm. can shift your whole perspective on rather than just going on automatic and jumping out of bed and, you know, getting on your day in a very hurried way. You start the day with present moment awareness and gratitude for being alive one more day. I love that. Now, um, during the busy day, though, things are thrown at you. It's yes. nice to start the day off, like, as you say, calming. But during the day, <coughs> excuse me, things are thrown at you. Absolutely. How do, we, how do we sort of take a step back during the day? Another wonderful tool that we don't ever have to go looking for is the breath. I mean, let's think about that. We have this gift, this miracle called the breath. This is what keeps us alive, if you will. So there are wonderful ways in which you can bring yourself into present moment awareness by just counting maybe up to four or five silently to yourself, or really just Feel your breath. If you're alone and you want to put your hands on your chest and feel the rising and falling of your breath, it is the great equalizer. It is the great grounder. If someone's about to go into a meeting or to do a PowerPoint presentation and they're feeling anxious, take a deep breath in and release the breath. Mm -hmm. Take another deep breath in, release the breath. It immediately calms the whole nervous system down and immediately brings you right back into the present moment. And you'll find that you can't concentrate on breathing and think at the same time because you're focused on the breath. So there are these wonderful God-given abilities that we have, these miracles, if you will, that we can, you know, circle back to at any time in the day. Yeah. And, and you know, um, that, tip that you talk about the breathing before you do a presentation um like like you i've done hundreds thousands of presentations around the world there and i still do that i still get nervous even after huge audiences because the day you're not nervous of course is the day where you're treating people um not 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 correctly enough you know you're just treating them as as an audience but i still have that breathing thing and i still take the the um, uh, the time just to just to compose myself, you know, and yeah. I think I think that's what ev everybody should be thinking about doing. Yes, just literally what I what I suggested. Just a couple of deep breaths in and a couple of deep breaths out. You're going to feel it in your body immediately. It calms you down, and it takes less than a minute. So mm -hmm. it's wonderful use that you know these are skill sets that we have readily available to us why not yeah. use them? yeah 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 but what I, again about what i like about the book and as i say i'm doing it modular so that um we'll probably have to talk again next christmas when i get to the final module <laughs> there's there's that much <laughs> there's that much in it but what i what i like about it is i'll just say the quotes and everything that also 
help you just take that little time out. So I want to read you the the, the Jonathan Swift one that you you've got uh, within the book because obviously we're called Biz Vision, and he says vision is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. Now I don't think you can see what's there if you just suddenly let the world go past you, don't you? Oh, absolutely. And I think that, you know, Swift's co- quote is, is really quite um, profound in a lot of ways because, you know, that in, in itself is in many ways what the mystical experience is about. Because mm-hmm. if you yourself connect to something that holds meaning for you that might not be noticeable or, e- or even visible to others, that's the type of connection that I'm talking about that gives us a greater meaning to our lives and actually heightens our awareness, if you will, which is the, the necessary you know, introduction into mysticism. We must heighten our awareness in order to receive these wonderful, beautiful experiences. Yeah, and, but it's that, it's that um, seeing what's invisible to others. You know, um, during lockdown, we didn't go very far, or I didn't go very far, and um, because I was too busy doing interviews like this around, around the world. Um, my wife said, oh, I'm going to drive you into our, to town. It's only five miles to our, our uh, country town. And um, as I sat in the car there, I said, oh, that's a new building. And she says, no, that's been around for ages. Uh-huh. And that's all oh, that's new. And I'd never seen these things before because I was always sitting in the driving seat, not in the passenger seat. And that's what brought that reality to me of that Jonathan Swift there. So how do we get into the passenger seat? That's a wonderful example, Malcolm, because it really lets you realize how much we don't see that perhaps is even there or has been there all along. It's not that it was just planted there for the first time. So that awareness, of course, you're driving, you're focusing on driving, which is the necessary activity to be focused on. But we can be a passenger at any given moment of our lives. You know, yes, we're in the driver's seat, you know, metaphorically, but we also have to understand that the art of seeing, if you will, you know, what I call in my my last book, uh, live true, a mindfulness guide to authenticity is, I called it life gazing. Do you know Mm -hmm. where we take those moments and we actually look out of our window and look at things like the sky or the birds flying across the sky. There is so much for us to see if we take the time to do so. Everybody can be a passenger of their own Mm -hmm. life where they are in the act of seeing, if you will, do you know? And the problem is we're so busy most of the time, we don't even allow ourselves to go into this thorough act of seeing. Yeah, yes, I agree with you. And oh, by the way, one of my favorites, um, talking about that, uh, apart from looking at nature, is forest bathing, you know, wandering into the woods. And sadly, we lost six trees in a big storm recently. And we are uh, out of our trees we've got in our garden there and I'm really missing them we counted the rings they were over 100 years old there um and so uh, but the, the rest of the trees there you only need to go there just at lunchtime or after uh, uh, an interview and suddenly the forest bathing can just take you into a, a different world thanks Aura now let's give viewers and listeners your details of two URLs, two URLs. The first is, um, obviously, viewers, you can see both of them on the screen behind me. But the first is Aura, Aura Nadrich, and that's spelled N-A-D-R-I-C-H, AuraNadrich.com. Now, Aura's book, this one that I keep going on and about and thoroughly enjoying, is called Mindfulness and Mysticism, Connecting Present Moment Awareness with Higher State of Consciousness, and it's published by the Institute of Transformational Thinking, which you can find, as it says on the screen behind me, at iftt.org. In episodes one and two, we've looked at Uh, let's call it the essentials of mindfulness, and started to take some action to rein in our busy minds. In episode three, I'm going to ask Aura to guide us in the direction of rewards for all this effort, especially creative inspiration. Aura, should we flip over to episode three? Let's do it, Malcolm. 